talk about in this particular teaching is called the balance of life. Say the balance of life. The balance of life. If you talk to most people and they're honest with you, the thing that most people are talking about now is it's hard to get a balance. I can't seem to get a grip on everything. Either I'm mastering this or this is slipping away. It's hard to get everything going at the same time. You know, my old pastor used to say, if you cover your head, your tail will stick out. If you cover your tail, your head going to stick out. It is hard to master everything in one's life at the same time. But the key to having a successful life is balance. Say balance. balance. So we're, gonna, we're talking about positioning, but it is important that you understand balance because balance has a lot to do with your position. A couple of things balance deals with. That balance deals with weight. And balance deals with stability. How many know that a, a tight rope walker has to have tremendous balance to walk a, a, a high rope, a tight rope? Well, that deals with your with your walk, your steps. But you also have to have balance for things not to throw you off. It has to be balanced. Anybody ever had an inner ear infection in here and your equilibrium was off and you had no balance? So balance is very important in a person's life. And balance is key to my position in life. Because it takes one thing to throw me off balance. And when one thing gets off balance, it can start a domino effect. And they can begin to throw everything. How many know one bad night's sleep and throw your whole week off? So you got to make sure that everything is done in balance. Say balance. Go over to Proverbs. I'm going to be reading from the New King James today, if that's okay. Proverbs chapter 11. One of my favorite scriptures in the text. Proverbs chapter 11, beginning at the first verse. It says in the New King James that dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. King James says a false balance. Say false balance. Oh, is an abomination, but just weights is his delight. Meaning that anything that is off kilter, mm -hmm. anything that has the potential to throw your life into a turmoil or a tailspin, that, that's an abomination. That's something that is detested by God. And it's amazing that he said that a false balance is an abomination. You wouldn't think God would be concerned about balance. He's concerned about balance for many reasons. In biblical times, they didn't have the currency that we have, so they would weigh out things. And people would kind of cheat in their dealings, and they would make the balance go in their favor. And, and God said that a false balance, things that try to Cheat people, cheat life, cheat me, are an abomination. They, they are detestable in my sight. And so when you're talking about balance, you, you can't talk about balance without going back to priorities. Because priorities will expose whether you're balanced or not. Because most people concentrate on the thing that's important to them. But very few people concentrate on the thing that is important to God. So it is impossible to have true kingdom balance if my priorities are out of whack and out of sync. Because we think many times what's important to us is important to God. And sometimes it is, but in many cases it's not. Because God really could care less what kind of car you drive. Or how many square footage your house has. God is more concerned about you as a person and you being developed so he can establish his purposes in you and through you for the fathering of his kingdom. Yes. Say God's purpose. God's purpose. So you need to underline that a false balance is an abomination. It, when things are off, it doesn't bring God glory. And I know most people that I deal with don't have any balance in their life. Mm -hmm. That there is something lacking. And a lot of people look like they got it together on the outside. But many times if you get to get a peek behind the scene, yeah. things are off balance. Yeah. And the people that look like they have the most perfect life, many times lives are in chaos and a tailspin and are out of order and out of balance. And there can't be real maturity and real growth if there's no balance. Mm -hmm. Because balance is what gives you the ability to keep everything moving. When things get out of balance, you have to stop. When a truck is being driven and, and the weight shifts, you have to stop. You have to distribute the weight. Truck drivers know what I'm talking about. You have to bring balance to that load or it could, it could flip your truck. It could cause you your life. And many times in life, there are things that shift 
and we don't take time to bring balance back to it to get the load right so we can keep the momentum in the kingdom of God. Because we don't realize how important balance is. Okay, it's getting quiet. It's all right. It's, it's okay. Go to Proverbs chapter 20. Kind of similar. Verse 23. Proverbs 20 and 23 says, Diverse weights are an abomination to the Lord. And dishonest scales are not good. When you try to stack the scales one way or another, he says it's not good. And here we go again. This diverse or, or different kind of weights is an abomination. But I like what he goes on to say in 24. He says that a man's steps are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? You, you don't understand your way. That's why we make mistakes when we try to do it our way. Because our steps are supposed to be ordered of the Lord. I never heard so many people quote the scripture that a, a righteous man, a man's steps are ordered of the Lord, but you never go in the direction that he orders your steps in. He said, because how can a man understand or perceive his own way? 25, he said, it is a snare for a man to devote rashly something that's holy. And afterwards, reconsider his vow. He said it is, oh man, he said it's a snare. It'll entrap you to promise God something. And then once the smoke clear, you start doing it your way. He said there is no balance. And many people are making promises to God. But when the excitement wears off, they begin to go back to business as usual and doing things their way. He said that's a false balance. That's an abomination. He says it's a snare. That's one of the things that will catch you up and hinder your momentum in the kingdom of God. That's good. When you try to lean to your own understanding and, and, and you begin to say, well, my steps ordered of the Lord. But did you even ask the Lord before you took the step? Mm -hmm. One of the things that I'm beginning to do more and more, and I've always done it, but even more so now as we get in the days that we're giving in, is I just begin to ask the Father, Father, show me what's on your heart. Before you ask for anything, give him a to-do list. Father, what's on your heart? What are you concerned about today? Many people don't ask the Father because many times we don't care. But, but what are you concerned about? What do you have for my life today? If you have a specific assignment, order my steps in the direction that will please you and bring you glory. Amen. Not the hype and the vows that we make when we are excited or the new year come in. I'm going to get closer to God. I'm going to read more. And we do it for a week. And after the week is over, we go back to business as usual because there's no balance. Because after a week, we start saying, man, I'm too busy to keep this commitment. And what it really shows God is that he is not the priority. And if he is not the priority, there is no balance. And if there is no balance, nothing else is really going to work right. So we try to squeeze God in, with, you know, get in where you fit in. That may work with some things, but it doesn't work with God. You know, there are some things you need a flathead screwdriver for. And some things you need a Phillips screwdriver you can't just use things to get different results. But well, you can't just put God in where you want him to fit in. Okay, I know this wouldn't be popular. But we are talking about divine positioning. Say divine positioning. Divine positioning. And what happens is, even our teenagers begin to, to practice this and begin to put things before God. And not realizing that it is the Lord that has even blessed them mm -hmm. and given them the strength to do what they're doing. Oh, yeah. But other interests and pools <laughs> begin to distract them from the purposes and the plan of God. Mm -hmm. And so they go through the motion. And so what happens? Teenagers grow up to be adults. And so you're so used to being off balance. It becomes familiar and it becomes comfortable. And so you live life juggling things and fitting God in where he gets in. So you never really go forth with any level of authority and power to produce the purposes and the plans of God. Because in order for me to go forth with power and authority, there first has to be a conviction. And if there is no true conviction, there will never be power. See, I have a conviction about people being healed. I have a conviction about people being delivered. I believe that with every fiber of my being. If you try to tell me it doesn't work, you might get slapped because you're too late. 
And so if you don't have any conviction, you won't produce power. And so what we have in the 21st century church is a church that is powerless because many of the convictions that our forefathers had, we used to have them, but we say it didn't take all that anymore. So we have let some things slip. Remember Hebrews say, don't let the stuff slip. Don't let it slip. He didn't say, you know, it's going to be taken. He said, don't let it slip because we're the ones that loosen the knot <clears throat> and start letting things come in that we used to never even consider allowing to come in because that's what balance does. Yeah. <laughs> not being balanced calls you not to be able to guard certain areas. Yeah. And so if you are off balance, you can be overtaken. And so many times we're overtaken in a fault, in a sin, in a distraction because there is no balance. The first thing they teach you in martial arts is not how to do a roundhouse, not how to do a death blow. The first thing that you may learn for months in martial art, if anybody ever been in martial art, is balance. Yeah. And not looking balanced, balanced from the core. Every move has to come from a place of balance. Yeah. And if your balance is off, everything else is going to be off. Yeah. I used to wonder, why in the world am I standing like this all day trying to 